Poetry is one of my favorite art forms. It allows writers to place their own thoughts, feelings, and beliefs onto the page through symbolism, personification, and other forms of figurative language that require a keen mind for structure, meter, rhyme, and word choices. This month, I get to introduce to you an author who is capable of that in spades. I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and for the April edition of Author Awareness, I'm interviewing Billy J. Barnum, descendant of the great P.T. Barnum, who has become a baron of a wordsmith himself. Happy Saturday and welcome to my channel. If you're new, glad to have you, and if you're a returning viewer, glad to have you back. You can become a channel supporter through Patreon and the Merch Store. Both are linked down in the video description. I will talk more about those options towards the end of the video. Of course, the fastest, the easiest, and the most free way to support what we do here is by becoming a subscriber. So, make sure to click that subscribe button and smash that like button. We are more than halfway through the month of April, which means events like Author Awareness August are quickly creeping up on us, and it's happening faster and faster. This season is going to be fantastic. I've got some local authors that I will be interviewing, among others, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I can honestly say that you will enjoy the marathon too. Before going any further with the video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications on new videos. You can select notifications for all videos, or you can select notifications based on your preferences. If you're watching on your phone, be sure to update those settings inside the app itself to get the most out of your viewing experience. So I connected with Mr. Barnum back in 2020. During the third season of my Storytellers podcast, I invited indie authors to have their work read as an audiobook style narration, and then they could follow up with an interview if they wished. Billy submitted one of his poems, The Pond with No Reflection, from his first book, and it was a fun, creepy meditation with elements of adventure and horror. I have that episode linked down in the video description if you want to listen to it. I really had a blast uh, recording it. But as I was looking for guests to interview for season four of the YouTube channel, Billy told me that he planned to have his second book out by spring, and naturally, I invited him back for a proper interview. So, here we go. I hope you guys enjoy getting to meet the Baron. Billy, thank you for joining me. Please tell me about what it is that you write and the books that you currently have out. Uh, currently, um, my first book, uh, Move Over Shakespeare, Tales from the Baron, uh, came out um, officially, I think uh, the date was uh, September 2019. Uh, but the uh, crazy thing is, which is awesome, um, it, it took a little low um, during the pandemic when you almost thought it would pick up. But uh, I don't know, I guess, you know, people were uh, strapped for cash and everything. But it's actually been ramped ramping up a lot uh, lately and it's actually selling extremely well um, and uh, my new book uh, should be coming out uh, very shortly um, this will be an exclusive for you uh, I almost don't want to tell you the title but I do because I like surprises I like I like my readers to be surprised uh, and of course this one has a creative title move over Shakespeare tales from the Baron and people like and they know that, you know, uh, I write creative poetry and uh, wild tales. Um, so, you know, stuff like that. But the new book, I'm going to give you an exclusive. Uh, you're the only one, probably maybe the second or third person I've told the name of the, the title of my new book to. 
My new book is going to be called The Unbelievable Believable, More Tales from the Baron. Nice. I like that title. Bit of a tongue twister, but it works. Correct. The gist is um, there are some uh, poems in this first book that people have read and probably shook their head when they got to the end of the poem and basically said, wait a second, <laughs> you know, because some of them may be real from based on real life experiences, but a lot of them are whatever comes into my mind. So when something comes to me, I write it down quickly. So, and I don't even know where it came from. That's awesome. So that kind of segues into the next question. How did you get into writing? Was this something that you've always wanted to do? Was it a transition from something else? Or was this a recent passion? Well, basically, um, it started as um, probably in my early teens that um, I used to see people hanging out all the time. Uh, obviously, I was heavy into the hard rock, heavy metal scene. And I, all my friends, everybody be hanging around, say, go to a little party or something. And everybody's playing air guitar. In school, everybody's playing air guitar to songs. And everybody's rocking out. And I'm just looking at everybody going, wait a second. You know what? That's kind of cool. But, you know, I think I would actually want to play the guitar because everybody's playing air guitar. And, you know, I used to say, do you guys want to play guitar or anything? No, nah, I just like playing air guitar. All right, well, I'm going to get a guitar. I'm going to actually learn how to play so basically, I picked up a guitar. I got a used guitar from one of my friends. Uh, I started teaching myself how to play it, completely self-taught. And of course, the natural progression is, now that I'm playing the guitar, uh, creative juices are flowing. So I started writing songs. And then um, songs turned into more creativity where basically other stuff just started coming to me. And they weren't quite a song, because some people say some poems could be songs realistically and some songs could be poems as well, vice versa. But for me, it's different. A song to me is a song and my poems, I don't want made into songs. There's some people that approached me uh, even recently about turning some of my poems into songs. And unfortunately for them, I turned them down because I don't take them as that way. So I started writing poems and basically just started compiling compiling poems. Wow, that's pretty good. And so, how'd you how'd you get the uh, the first book published? What was the process for that? Um, the process was uh, over the years. Of course, I continued to write more poems whenever something came to me, and I just had them uh, in a draw, put away, and I moved a lot. And everywhere I moved to, probably 10, 12 different places. Luckily, nothing happened to them. No tragic flood events or nothing ruined them. No fires. If there was, I'd be screwed. They'd all be gone. Yeah. But, you know, everybody kept saying when I used to recite some of my poems to some people and they'd say, you know, you got to do something with that. Oh, man, that's good. You got to do something with that. Uh, and a lot of people, for some of the poems in my first book, move over Shakespeare Tales from the Baron would say, man, that sounds just like Shakespeare. And I, I say, no, sir. And they say, no, that really is like some Shakespeare. Hence the name of the book, move over Shakespeare Tales from the Baron, because they used to tell me that. So basically, um, uh, a couple of years ago, um, probably three years ago, I had a two month break. I was going to college um, and I got my associate's degree. And I, had a, I was on a two month break before winter classes started. I'm, I'm doing it right now. And I just took the whole stack, opened up a Word document, started typing like a maniac four or five hours a day, every day, nonstop, nonstop, like a maniac. <laughs> like, I was, like I was possessed. But I just felt that it's, it, I gotta, it's now or never. I gotta do this or they're just gonna sit there for who knows how long or maybe never get published. And no one's ever going to read them. And people used to tell me, you got to get this published. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. So once I got done with everything, read everything over, uh, I submitted it to a publisher. And about three weeks later, I got a phone call. Um, we'd love to publish your book. And I said, how do we get started? Let's go. And just started going. So obviously, you talked about your inspiration for poetry. It comes from a lot of different places. 
music seems to be one of them. Are there other inspirations that you have uh, that that kind of just creep into uh, the elements of your poetry? You know, and anybody watching this right now and uh, people listening to this, um, and even you, you'd probably think that I would say other things that I've read, other authors, uh, other things like that. But unfortunately, nothing like that really influences me. And I try not to let any of that be too much of an influence to me. I know other people would say that's crazy. Uh, why not read uh, Shakespeare or, um, you know, all these other famous authors, Hemingway, and why not read them and then let that be an influence? But realistically, it would bleed too much into what I write. So basically, somebody might read something and say, oh, I can tell that this is definitely, a, you know, influenced by this. Mm -hmm. And they might take it in a good way. They might take it in a bad way. Like, you know, is he trying to copy? That's pretty cool. I, I mean, I, and I get that what you're talking about with regards to trying to avoid uh, other poets and other authors, because I mean, when I'm writing on my, my fantasy stuff, I tend to avoid fantasy so that I don't have anything uh, mixed in and it feels like I'm borrowing from something else. I completely understand that. So what has been one of the hardest parts or the biggest challenges in the creation of, of what you've written? The biggest challenge of the first book was to see if I can get it published. And once I realized I could, then waiting for the whole process to be done through the editing and all that stuff, mm -hmm. which took about 10 months, but for me felt about 10 years. And since the poems were sitting around for so many years, it was like an eternity because I already had an eternity before it got published. But my second book, the, um, the challenges for me are putting enough content into the book and hoping that it measures up and exceeds my first book. And I'm almost done with it at this point, and I think it's going to be coming out uh, very shortly, like could be any week now. And this one I'm going to self-publish myself. I'm going to do it through Kindle. I'm going to uh, do Amazon. I'm going to self-publish it. it you're, you're a published author, correct? Yes. You know the chunk they take before your chunk, your little tiny morsel gets to you, right? Um, I've actually <laughs> done everything self-published, so yeah. everything is coming out of my pocket. So uh, whatever returns I get, they're all mine. Correct. So so the um, the main challenge of the, the, the second book is to make sure that it way exceeds and way tops the first book. So people love the first book, which a lot of people, uh, the five-star reviews, I'm not bragging, it just is what it is. They're piling up by the week, but um, that's that's the biggest challenge. I want this one to far exceed the first, first book where people say, I was anticipated getting it because I got the first one, but wow, this one's way better. What kind of advice would you give to other would-be authors out there, whether they're poets, novelists, whatever? What advice would you give them, and, and how would you how would you approach it? Uh, I mean, the best advice uh, I can give, and there's probably so many other people that would give this exact same advice as well, is I read stuff on Twitter from all, you know, my followers and stuff because I'm in the uh, book writing, uh, the writing community. And there's a lot of people that are terrified. They're like, um, coming up, I'm finishing my book and I'm thinking about getting published, but they're terrified about what other people think. See, there's what separates me from not all of them, but the people that are terrified is I'm not if, if I I feel that what I what I have is definitely good enough I know there's an audience for it and I know there's going to be even people that say uh, I'm not sure if I even like poetry I really never got into it mm -hmm. but people have read my first book and they and they were like you know what I didn't think I liked poetry but that was pretty damn good so don't worry about what anybody thinks if you put your blood, sweat, and tears into something, you wrote however many pages or however many months and maybe however many years, and you have something, you feel it's a finished product, put it out. Let people decide for themselves and put it out. All right. Well, Billy, uh, 
we're getting ready to wrap up here. Uh, how can people get a hold of your book uh, and how can they connect with you? You've already mentioned your, your Twitter account once. This is a great time to plug it a second time. Correct. Uh, I have a Facebook uh, page, Move Over Shakespeare. Um, so it's at Move Over Shakespeare. Uh, I have uh, the Twitter is Poacherman551, uh, which I'm getting, luckily, uh, thousands and thousands of followers every week or so. Um, uh, my email, if somebody wants to write me, they can write me at Move Over Shakespeare at, at Hotmail.com. <laughs> and, um, you know, I set up a, I just recently set up a link tree, which has all the links where people can purchase my book uh, anywhere. Um, the crazy thing is I've been selling books like crazy recently in, in Australia, the UK, like all over the world. So um, wherever you live, wherever you're watching this from, my book is available worldwide. Go on Amazon in whatever country you live in, type in the title, Move Over Shakespeare, Tales from the Baron. And you'll be able to get the book. Well, thank you, Billy. I do appreciate you coming on the show and sharing a little bit more about Move Over Shakespeare, as well as giving us a little bit of a heads up for what's coming up this spring with your second book. All right, man. It's been cool. Thanks. A big thank you goes out to Billy J. Barnum for participating in this month's author awareness interview. Now, if you're interested in connecting with him or picking up copies of his work, you can do so by clicking on the links down below and you'll be able to get copies of his work. You're going to enjoy it. Hey, thanks for watching. Please make sure to hit like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel in other ways, you can do so on Patreon through one of three affordable support plans. Patrons get access to blooper reels, behind the scenes videos, and so much more. You can also buy sweet merch from my store on Teespring, which you can then turn around and rep on Instagram and Twitter by tagging me at GKJ underscore publishing and using the hashtag Five Kingdoms Merch. Or you can sign up for the free poster giveaway. I'm giving away this autographed poster. All the links are down in the video description and I will announce a winner for the poster giveaway when I hit 200 YouTube subscribers. I'll see you guys back here next week for a brand new Creator's Corner where I will be continuing to talk about the hero's journey which we're focusing on steps seven and eight, which is where the hero approaches the ordeal. The vlog of the Five Kingdoms is filmed without the use of a live audience at Skyrocket Studios in Hanford, California. We can't do what we do without your help, so please make sure to subscribe by clicking the button that's above my head, and make sure to watch and share the videos over here to my left. Have a great week.